join us. Hello everyone. It's such a blessing to have you back again for our Sanctuary Bible Study today. And today we are going to be talking about the standard of the Camp of Reuben. And we're going to discover what animal was on the flag for the standard of Reuben and its significance and how that relates to the life and ministry of our blessed Savior, Jesus. And before we get started, we're going to have a word of prayer. We'd like to invite you as to bow your heads with us as we have our prayer. Hannah, would you pray for us, please? Okay, sure. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you for this day. As we're going to continue our study about the sanctuary, may you be with us and speak to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, last week we studied about which camp again, Hannah? The camp of Judah. That's right, the camp of Judah. And which side of the sanctuary were they camped on? The east. That's right, on the east side of the sanctuary. And we discussed the significance of that and how that relates to Jesus and the direction that Jesus will be coming when he comes back the second time and what was the animal that represented the tribe of Judah again? A lion. That's right, a lion. And so today we're going to discover what animal represents the camp of Reuben and the standard or the flag which they had above their camp. So would you like to know which animal it was that represents the tribe of Reuben, Hannah, and everyone? Yes! Okay, so let's turn our Bibles, everyone. And Hannah, would you turn your Bible with us as well to Revelation chapter 4, and let's read verse 7. That's Revelation chapter 4 and verse 7. Would you read that for us, please, Hannah? Okay, sure. In Jesus' name. And the first beast was like a lion, and the second beast was like a cat, and the third beast had a face as a man, and the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. That's right. So it tells us that the second living creature or beast was like a calf, right? Did you catch that, everyone? So, a calf or an ox. So, what animal represents the camp of Reuben, Hannah? The ox. That's right, the ox or a calf. Now, how do we know, everyone, in Hannah, that it was actually an ox or a calf? How does this relate to Jesus? And what does an ox stand for? An ox stands for sacrifice. sacrifice. That's right. Everyone, that's correct, Hannah. So what does an ox stand for again, Hannah? Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Now, how do we know that the ox can be an um, antitype of Jesus and his sacrifice? Well, let's see what Mark has to tell us about the life of Jesus. Let's turn our Bibles there to Mark chapter 10, verse 45. And let's see what Mark tells us about Jesus and what he came to do for us. That's found in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 45. So, we'd like to invite you to turn your Bibles with us to Mark, chapter 10, as Hannah reads for us, verse 45. Go ahead and read for us Mark, chapter 10, verse 45, Hannah. Okay, sure. In Jesus' name. For even the Son of Man come not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. That's right. The Bible tells us that Jesus came not to be ministered to or to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, would you all like to know what another word for ransom means? Would you like to know what another word for ransom means, Hannah? Yes. It's the word sacrifice. So, 
Can everyone tell me again what's another word for ransom? What's another word for ransom, Hannah? Sacrifice. That's right, sacrifice. Did you catch that, everyone? Sacrifice. And so in the book of Leviticus, which tells us about the services of the sanctuary, we see that the ox or the calf was also an animal that was used for sacrifice. They were offered as a free will offering sacrifice, as a trespass offering, which is a sin offering or sacrifice. And this shows us that Jesus would come when he came the first time to die on the cross for our sins. Now, I'd like to ask another question. And Hannah, have you ever wondered what another definition is or another title is for the book of Leviticus? Yes. All right. So another title for the book of Leviticus could be called the gospel according to Moses. Now, did you catch that? What's another definition for the book of Leviticus? The gospel of Moses. The gospel of Moses. That's right. And have you ever wondered why that is, everyone, and Hannah? Yes. All right. Here we go. The reason why that is is because it tells us about the services of the sanctuary. That's interesting to learn and know, isn't it? Yes, it is. And not only does it tell us about the services of the sanctuary, but like I mentioned a while ago, it pointed forward to the fact that the whole purpose and the mission of Jesus would be when he was born the first time and came the first time would to be to offer himself as a sacrifice for our sins on the cross. And that is a wonderful thought, isn't it? Yes, it is. That God loves us so much that before Jesus even came the first time, he had already revealed to us in the Old Testament sanctuary service that when Jesus came the first time, that he would come to offer himself as a sacrifice for many, like we just read in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 10, verse 45. Thank you, everyone, for your response, and thank you, Hannah, for your response as well. You're welcome. Now, have you ever wondered what the Gospel of Mark tells us about our Lord Jesus? Yes. All right, would you like to learn what it tells us about what the Gospel of Mark tells us about our Lord Jesus, everyone, Hannah? Yes! All right, so the Gospel of Mark tells us about Jesus' service to humanity and his sacrifice for us. So what was that again, everyone, and Hannah? What does the Gospel of Mark tell us about Jesus? Jesus' sacrifice for humanity to us. That's right. Jesus sacrificed for humanity and his service to humanity. Good job, everyone. Good job, Hannah. And now, one more question I would like to ask. Have any of you, and have you, Hannah, ever wondered what Mark's name means? Would you like to learn what Mark's name means, everyone, and Hannah? Yes. All right. Well, Mark's name actually means a servant, means servant. Very interesting to learn, isn't it? Yes. Yes, it is. Now, how do we know for a fact, though, that Jesus came to live his life as a servant for us and to give his life as a sacrifice for us? Let's turn our Bibles to Philippians chapter 2. And we're going to read verses 6 to 9, and we're going to discover something very interesting that the Apostle Paul has to tell us about what Jesus did when he came the first time. All right, Hannah, read for us Philippians chapter 2, verses 6 to 9. Okay, sure. In Jesus' name, who is being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be eagle with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient unto death even the death of the cross wherefore god also hath highly exalted him 
and given him a name which is above every name. That's right. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, everyone, for following along with us. So, everyone, what we just read here in Philippians chapter 2, verses 7 to 9, and Hannah, how did Jesus come to live his life when he came the first time? As a servant. That's right. As a servant and to give his life as a sacrifice for us because he died on the cross for us, not for himself, right? Yes. That's correct. Now, I want to also share with us verse 10, because we read in verse 9 how it said that God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Now, how is it that God has highly exalted Jesus, everyone in Hannah? How is that? Would you like to learn how that is? Yes. All right. So we know that the Bible tells us that God has given Jesus a name that is above every name, and this is how he has highly exalted Jesus, because here we're going to discover in verse 10, notice what it says, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Everyone will bow at the name of Jesus and confess it. Jesus is Lord to the glory of the Father. And this is how he is highly exalted above everyone. And everyone will acknowledge the kingship and the lordship of Jesus. Some willingly, and unfortunately there will be those also that will have to do it because... It will be forced from their lips, not because God forces them, but because they have, they acknowledge the lordship and kingship of Jesus, that he's the rightful sovereign of this universe and of our world. But what's even more important? Would you like to learn what's more important, everyone in Hannah? Yes! That we, in this life that we have right now, learn how to accept and acknowledge the lordship and the kingship of Jesus in our lives so that we can be among that group that willingly confesses that Jesus is Lord and King according to the glory of the Father. And so we see here that in our study that the ox represents an animal of sacrifice and of service. And it shows us the life that Jesus came to live in our behalf so that he could save us from our sins, but not in our sins. And you know, here's another interesting point I'd like to share with you, Hannah, and with everyone. Because when Jesus died, did he remain in the grave? No. No, he's not in the grave anymore. Where is he, everyone? And where is he, Hannah? In heaven. That's right. Jesus is in heaven right now. In the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary. Ministering in our behalf before our Father during these times of the investigative judgment. But soon, Jesus is going to come back. And we want to make sure that we're ready, don't we? Yes. Yes, that's right. So as we bring our study to a close and we summarize this study we can see that we've learned from our study today about the camp of Reuben and the ox that we have learned that the service and sacrifice of Jesus can be seen in the activities and the services of the Old Testament sanctuary service. So we hope you are blessed by our study today on the camp of Reuben and how the ox relates to the life of Jesus. and. Next week, we will be taking a look at the camp of Ephraim, and we're going to discover what the symbol is, or the standard is, for the camp of Ephraim, and how that relates to the life and ministry of Jesus as well, too. Are you excited for next week's study, Hannah? Yes! Yes, and I hope everyone else is as well, too. We hope you've been blessed by our study. And let us have our closing prayer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we want to thank you so much for this study on the camp of Reuben and the 
standard of Reuben and the ox that represented that camp, Lord. And thank you for showing us how an ox, even though it was animal sacrifice, how it relates to the life of Jesus, how he came to give his life and live his life as a service to us and to give his life as a sacrifice in our behalf. Dear Father in heaven, we ask that you would help us to be more submitted to the working of the Holy Spirit, to show us and to teach us how to allow Jesus to live out his life within us on not just a daily, but a moment by moment basis so that his character can be perfected and reflected in our lives. Be with all of our listeners and their families and their friends and watch over them and protect them and keep them safe. And be with us as well and protect us and keep us safe. And until we meet again next week, in Jesus' name we thank you and pray. Amen. That's all for today. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. We hope you were blessed for our study. God bless you and we look forward to joining with you again in next week's study. Have a blessed week, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.